Is it appropriate to approach a woman in the gym while she is working out? Don't interrupt my workout. Don't interrupt no, the workout. Kidding. Don't, just don't interrupt my set. Okay, okay, okay. No, it's okay. Like, to be honest, I mean, if we weren't together, like, I would want a guy that would be Ooh. working out too. That's <laughs> <right>. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just taking this in. So a recent study came out and revealed that nearly 48% of the people who look like me, black people, minority people, will make on average about $38,000 a year. Now, the average person in America will make anywhere between like forty-five dollars to $55,000 a year. And to be honest, I don't like that. You and I both deserve more than that. We deserve the six figures if we're willing to put in the work. And I'm super excited because I have just recently partnered with an organization that can help you get there within nine months. And that organization is called Bethel Tech. My friend Ryan here today is with me. Ryan, what are y'all doing over there at Bethel Tech that is changing people's lives in the next nine months? Yeah, we are the first online Christian coding boot camp in the world. We equip individuals with the most in-demand tech skills like software development, Ooh. data science, UI, UX design. We just launched cybersecurity so that individuals can go into the marketplace and get high paying, high growth careers in the tech space. Like how much? Well, average starting pay for a developer is $65,000. It's not uncommon to be making six figures within a year, yeah. honestly. That's just where the demand is, yeah. and, and that's the, the, the rocket ship growth in the space. So listen, we're about to get into today's show, but I want, you to make, I want to make sure that you check out the link in the show description. Listen, Bethel Tech is changing your life in the next nine months. If you can commit to nine months, I promise you the next nine years of your life has changed. Let's get to today's show. What's happening? No cap. We ain't all about to get a play. Go pull up to the table. Let's go. What's going on, fam? It's your boy Anthony O'Neill. Welcome back to the table. It's Monday. You guys already know we'll keep it real, uh, relevant, and relatable. And I'm so pumped today uh, because I have my friends, Jeffrey and Ashley, uh, the owners of Get FedEx. They're in the building today, at the table today. But before we get over to them, I want to just remind you that uh, we are about creating individuals to accomplish all their goals. We're going to help people reach um, all their dreams. We're going to help you get out of debt, build wealth. And I want to make sure that you're hitting that subscribe button. So hit the subscribe button, join the family, join the crew, because I promise you every Monday and next year, going into 2022, we're going to two shows. That's right. I'm bringing you some more content with some great stuff that's going to help you reach all of your goals. So hit that subscribe button, hit the bell button. So every Monday, every time I drop something special, <laughs> you'll get a notification of what's coming on. But I'm really excited about today's show because um, you guys know me. I'm very big into my health, into my body. You know, I got a good looking <laughs> body. You know what I'm saying? Not as good looking as my trainer who's in the building today, but my body looks good. I remember when I weighed about, I think I weighed about like 110 pounds uh, when I was 24, 25 years old. And I remember a young lady told me, she was like, you're skinny and I don't date skinny men. She said, I mean, you're like a toothpick. And honestly, while she did me wrong, she was telling the truth. And I remember going into the gym and really taking my fitness to the next level. Then when I came here to Jacksonville, I met up with my trainer, him and his wife, and, and we met at the YMCA. And I was real big, but I said, I need to slim down. I don't want to get cut. So that way, when I get naked to, with my wife, she can enjoy the view. The key word there was my wife. <laughs> But in my studying, I really want y'all to understand this, at, all jokes aside, in a recent study from Business Insider, they surveyed 200 wealthy people. And when they, when they say wealthy people, these were individuals who made over $160,000 a year. 76% of these 200 wealthy people exercised at least 30 minutes or more every single day. That's anything from cardio, walking, biking, or actually lifting weights. Then in addition to exercising and working out, check this out, they actually ate healthy. They actually slept at least seven hours or more every single night. So y'all be cracking jokes at your boy when I be going to bed at 8.30 at night, then I wake up at about 5, 6, 6 a.m. every single morning because I, I want to get the proper sleep. And I actually learned from my trainer that's with us today that you got to get the proper amount of sleep. Now, he don't sleep, you know, his wife do, uh, but 
He don't sleep, which is why I look better than him. But anyways, <laughs> you know, so not only are they sleeping well, they're eating well, but then check this out, you guys. They're also avoiding drinking as much. So they're, they're, they're partaking in some alcohol, uh, but they're watching how much alcohol that they have. Then also, to check this out, they're working their brains by not watching TV, but by reading books. So here's the thing. Here's what I learned after reading this study, okay? That health is becoming the new wealth. We can't really build wealth. We can't go to work every single day. We can't go out there and build our businesses every single day if we're not healthy on the inside. Yes, we'll look good on the outside. Yes, we'll have the muscles. Yes, we'll have the guns. Yes, ladies, you'll have the flat stomachs and the nice booties. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on how you can do that. But before we can have all of that, we got to work the inside. So today, I'm really excited about how we can talk about how do we boost our confidence, how do we improve our memory, and how do we improve the concentration? How do we really focus on those kind of things as we work out? Because I know personally, uh, when I started my health journey, my whole life changed. And I'm really excited to have my friends today here at the table, Jeffrey and Ashley. They are the owners of Get Fitix here in Nashville, Tennessee. Can y'all help me welcome them to the table? Jeffrey and his amazing wife, Ashley. What's up, boy? I love my fit wife. Your wife is fit. I love my fit husband. He ain't that fit. <laughs> He ain't that fit, you know what I'm saying? He he all right. He, he, you know, he all right. 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 So, you guys have Get Fitix here in Nashville, Tennessee. Yep. Uh, and when we first met, man, you and I met at the YMCA yeah. here in Nashville. And, uh, man, we was in there shutting Nashville YMCA down. Oh, yeah, they want, they was trying to kick us out. Oh, yeah, they was kicking us out <laughs> because I was I was big then. I was throwing up 225 like it was nothing. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's go all the way back to the beginning because I know a lot of my viewers today are they're, they're used to hearing me about you know money journey. Mm -hmm. They're used to hearing me talk about money and getting out of debt. But I really do believe that our bodies mm -hmm. and our health impacts our wealth. And so, but I want to go back to the very beginning of you all. Then we're going to go into talking about what the ladies want to hear about. You know, how do we get the right body? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're going to talk about the brothers. How do we get the right arms, yep. you know, and get the chest? Because, you know, guys don't care about legs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> never, never, never miss a leg day. <laughs> but, but let's go back to the very beginning, man. Yeah. Um, where are you from and how did you both meet? I'm from Arkansas, small town on the border of Arkansas and Louisiana. Okay. I'm from Ohio. You are from Ohio? Yeah. What part? Mount Vernon is by our northeast of Columbus. Oh, by Columbus? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So how did y'all both meet? Was it was it high school? Y'all college sweethearts? Or y'all just meet up at a club somewhere? We, we, we Ooh, college. But, but, <laughs> 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 it, it was college, but I wouldn't say it was college sweethearts. We we met at college and we were friends before anything. So okay. like, um I, I was that. <laughs> I was three. I was I three. Mean, what, what is that about? <laughs> oh no! Oh, what was that? I'm just leaving right there. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about three years ahead of her, so um, I was actually dating one of her friends that became one of her friends, and we were just like, "Don't." Yeah, it wasn't nothing like that. Like, I saw her as like a sister. Like <laughs> when we first, yeah, yeah, Cover. yeah. So I you was, called her a sister? Mm -hmm, yeah, literally. Yeah, like I would, they would come over to. We 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 went to this. Private, I call her a sister though. Yeah, yeah, That's but so weird. Not man. no more though. I call her a sister <laughs> no more. You know. What I'm saying? Um, but we went to this private Christian school, so like, um, boys were in one dorm, girls were in one dorm, and then you could stay off campus. So after I graduated, I was off campus. So okay. um, a lot of the guys and girls would come hang over in my house and everything like that. So she was one of the people in the group. So I was kind of like a mentor to a lot of the young guys that came in. So um, she was just part of that class that was also surrounded by those same people, so. So let me get this straight. You was dating one of her friends? Yeah, well, they became friends, yeah. They became friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We and became you just... friends through him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So you got tired of her, and you said, I want to. Yeah, <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 Oh, hey, I like to say it. Hey, I, 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 I looked at her. I said, hey. You are on the table. I said, hey, you. Ooh. Nah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, it just it literally one day her dad came up to our homecoming game in college. And her, uh, she introduced me, introduced me to her dad. And her dad was like, yo, hey, that's, I really like him. Like, you should date him. She was like, no, no, I don't see him like that. It's nothing like that. And then 
What was it, two years later? Oh, you forget your dad. Like, oh, yeah, her dad loved oh. her, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah so... Um, so it's not like your parents played a role in both. The parents of them. saw it. Yeah. They saw it, yeah. But we we were so stuck on our friendship and um, us just being there for each other. Yeah. Like, we didn't want to mess that up. But That's then, right. like, it just happened. But then when we did decide to date, we were married with them, what, three months? Like six. Yeah, something like that. Six, six, I know, it was quick. Five, it was six, quick. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was quick. quick. So y'all... Once we, well, but because y'all, y'all we already knew each friends. other. Mm-hmm. You knew each other. We already knew each other. Yeah. Yeah. Man, so. that's so awesome. That's so awesome. I remember um, Jeff when you and I were talking, man. Which is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on the show, uh, because my brand is evolving into this brand of of relationships mm-hmm. and money. Yeah. Like, how do we steward uh, the single season correctly? Mm-hmm. How do we have healthy relationships, friendships, marriages, dating relationships, stuff like that. And one of the things you told me, which was so cool, is that you actually walked away from an opportunity uh, to make six figures at a job Mm -hmm. because you wanted to be the best husband and the Mm -hmm. best father Mm -hmm. as possible. Real quickly, I mean, break that down for us. What does that mean? Because I really want my tribe to hear from another black man. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I didn't chase the bag. Yeah. Um, I chase being a father. I chase being the leader of my home. I chase being, you know, the great husband mm-hmm. uh, to my wife. And it's so funny. I've gotten to know your wife over the last couple of years, man. And you got a dope wife. Thank you. She works and yeah. she just does all family. Yeah. She don't. Yeah. She don't go out with girlfriends. It's her love is working. What she loves to do, and you and her and y'all's daughter. Mm-hmm. So what made you as a man? Because most men watching right now mm-hmm. would have took that six figures. Yeah. Rather than saying, you know what? No, I want to walk my daughter to school. Yeah, yeah. Well, so backstory a little bit. Um, I worked in retail. And um, after I graduated college, you know, just like anybody, um, Sally Mae was knocking on the door like, hey, it's time to pay your student loans and everything. So for me, I wanted to get started into a career where I could start making some money paying that debt off. So um, got into a retail manager position, worked my way up really fast, started making that money, started paying off that debt. Um, but I'm, I've always known that I wanted to, like, run a business. I just didn't know what it was, right? Mm. So for me, when I got into that retail job, you, you know, you said it wasn't about I, choose, I chose my family over making the bag. Yeah. No, I was still thinking about making the bag. I just wanted to make it for myself. Ah, like, I wanted ah. to control it. So, I got you. Um, But I didn't have any background on how to run a business or anything like that. So um, I took that retail management position. Um, and use that as an opportunity to learn how to, you know, run a business. But while working at retail job, I also had two other side jobs on the side to clean up my debt, you know. Yeah. Um, but fast forward, we were living in Arkansas. She's from Ohio. We had to make a compromise. We had a baby. She didn't want to live in Arkansas. I didn't want to move to Ohio. Nashville was a half- halfway point. Okay. So compromise. We decided we were going to move here. Well, retail as most people know, is very, very competitive. So yeah, they absolutely. go after managers from another. Right. I mean, I was in retail pharmacy. So um, put my resume out here that I was moving toward Nashville, and I had no idea Nashville was blowing up like it was. Yeah. You know, so um, got, as soon as I put it out there, got hits from different um, other retail places. Like, hey, we would love to have you. Da-da-da-da. Well, I had one opportunity from this retail um, company that was expanding to Hawaii. And they interviewed me and they said, hey, we would love to have you take over that. Um, and it was lucrative. I'm talking about big salary. You know, I would have been able to move my family there. They would have paid for all that amazing amount of money. Um, but right before we got We're done. We're talking about like more than 200000 Uh It was about 240000 Yeah. 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 Um, but that's also with potential, depending on how the store did yep, yep. and everything like that. Um, but right before, right when we got done with the interview, the last thing the guy said to me, he he realized the interview went well, shook my hand. He was like, all right, you ready to sell your soul over? And I was like, it, excuse me? He was like, it's 160-hour weeks. He was like, no holidays. He was like, but you give your family whatever they want. He was like, you have all the money in the world. And, you know, I laughed it off, but when I was driving back home, I got home and I talked to her. I was like, man, I, I just don't know if I want to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, um, that's a lot of money. And I was like, but I also feel like that God has put us in a position mm-hmm. to where we've made this leap of faith to move to Nashville. Mm-hmm. And if I don't do it now, while I'm still in good standings, I've never burnt the bridge with the company that I'm with. Mm-hmm. If I was to leave and try to start my thing, I can always go back to retail if it fails, you know. 
Um, but I, I wanted to try it for myself. So we, um, we, we did. We, I turned it down. Um, I haven't missed anything with my daughter. Um, and our business is booming right now. You know, so it was the best thing we did. So I asked his wife, actually, when he said, hey, I'm thinking about turning it down, what was your first thoughts when he said, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want this? I was fine. You were. Yeah, because to me, it's not about the money. It's about quality time. And retail, we were in retail for so long. Mm -hmm. gotcha. um, but also, you know, I work 12-hour shifts. You know, at that time, I was working 12-hour shifts in the hospital. And so, you know, we have a child to take care of. None of us were going to be able to spend time. And I think family time is so much more important to me than money. Wow. So I would, I was okay. I think really it backs up to the point of when he got offered the job and he was talking about moving to Hawaii. I was more of wanting, like, ooh, that's kind of far away wow. from our families. Right. So that was more of my thing. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's interesting, man. I, I, I am, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. That, that was a, that's a dope move. I don't know too many men who would turn down that much money mm -hmm. just to spend more time. Yeah. And not just spend more time. You, you said, hey, I, I still want the money. Mm -hmm. But I want to build the money with my family. Yeah. Well, you also got to think about it. I had already cleaned up $74,000 worth of debt with the job that I had. Okay. Um, so we money was not the... We, we, were, we were not in a bad debt situation to where money was a driving force. Right, right. We, were, we put ourselves in a position to where we could make a decision to move forward, to kind of like where we're in a driver's seat to decide on if we wanted to make the money for ourselves or if I want to make the money, you know, based on what somebody was telling me to do. And no downplay to anybody who is, yeah, you know, working those yeah. jobs. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, but I also had to, one of the hardest things I ever did in my life was I had to fire a 40, she was, had been with the company 37 years on Christmas Day to meet quota, you know. Right. I don't want to, I don't want to have to make those decisions again right. based on, you know, the value of a dollar because the company's trying to make me the bottom line, you know? So um, to me, that that played a part in it too. And um, it's all about legacy. I want to leave my daughter with something. Um, and I I think and I hope and I pray that this is something that we can leave her with. That, um, whether she wants to work it or not is not the big thing, but she has it to fall back on. Man, you know? my so, little niece wants to work it, dog. She loves being in that gym. <laughs> she loves that gym, man. Every time I do something wrong in the gym, she looks yeah, at me yeah, and laughs at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And she gonna do it wrong, but she gonna laugh at you though. So that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm like, sis, what are you doing, little niece? Yeah, She's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. So transitioning as a man to now stepping into full time, you know, being a full time entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Not only do you have to build something, you still gotta provide. Yeah. As a man, you mm -hmm. you still got to, you know, come home with some sort of income. Yeah. Um, you still got to come home and make sure your wife is still comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that your daughter still understands. How did that feel as a man transitioning from a guaranteed paycheck yeah. as the breadwinner to now starting a business while your wife is still working yeah. in, in a medical field? How did yeah. you feel as a man? So um, it was the first, I would say, three weeks of when we actually opened up the business. was uh, It was tough. But um, also, again... I, I didn't miss one day at my last job. So I had about three and a half months of paid leave. <laughs> so I had a three oh. and a half month, like check that I was consistently getting. So Smart. I knew that, right? you know, now three and a half months wasn't going to start my business off like right. and make it be, but it gave me an idea of where we landed, you know? So that was good. But I mean, yeah, I had to swallow my pride a little bit um, and realize that like uh, until my business starts to turn, she might be the breadwinner at that point, Ooh. you know? Um, and and I, I was absolutely okay with that. You like, were? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was okay with that. Were you okay being the breadwinner for a while? Honestly, was, as a woman. I think it was it was hard. Mm. It's, 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 it's hard. <laughs> what was hard, I'm curious, because... Now both of y'all, I mean, y'all winning. I mean, y'all y'all ha have Nashville on lock right now. And and what y'all are doing to get fit with your vision is killing. But I'm curious, when you first started as a wife, yeah. why was that hard? I think more so because I feel like I'm independent. Mm. But 
not that independent. I'm very dependent on him. Yeah, yeah I got And you. I don't realize it as much until, you know, you get placed in a situation like that. Um, so good. But more of, he kind of wanted me more to be like a stay-at-home wife and a stay-at-home uh, mom at one point when we originally mm-hmm. got together and I okay. didn't want that. Okay. Um, but when time comes to have a child, I kind of wanted that. So that's yeah. what made it so hard because yeah, gotcha. he was staying at home with her, building a business, you know, and building the framework for that. And I was working extra shifts at the hospital, being away from both of them. So wow. like I said, I mean, family is important to me, so it was hard, but I understood we had to get to that point. It didn't come without fight, I'm not yeah. going to lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But I think you can, also you can't be afraid to make sacrifice mm-hmm. and and trust that, I mean, even though you're in control, you got to let control go a little bit, like, and let God, like, lead you. Mm-hmm. So um, even though I, I'm, I'm a planner, you know me. Yeah. Like, this, this, if this doesn't happen, this is the outcome and da 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 But when we first open, you can't control how great your business go. Absolutely. No matter how much you say you think you can, you can have a brilliant idea. It just might not take off. Whether that be marketing, whether that be the way it was presented, it just, it just depends. But um, I also was okay with cutting back on things that, whether it would have been going out, mm. um, buying Christmas gifts, mm. whatever. If she would have came to me and said, hey, yo, look, this is too stressful for me right now. While you're also doing that, I'm like, okay, let's sit down. Let's, you don't have to work all those hours. Right. Let's lower our cost of living down oh. so we can actually, and we did that. We adjusted okay. and then things, and then we adjusted and we adjusted, you know. Um, but through that process, we also learned trust, you know. And I think through that process, and I'm speaking for her, I hope she agrees, um, <laughs> that through that process, I think she kind of got a good feel for why, what I do as far as behind the scenes to make things go smoothly to where she don't have to worry about it because she didn't have to worry about the bills or the Mm -hmm. debt. She just had to do, you know? So I try to like iron it out to where she just had to do. So, Um, but then when she became the breadwinner, she had to get into that. And like, that was a different role for her that she wasn't normally used to, you know? So, you know, I'm known for this conversation on my, on my show, like ladies, could you date a man and marry a man who's not the breadwinner? And some of them said, it's going to be a challenging question for you. If you want me to edit it out, let me know. <laughs> but uh, if you don't, just keep it in the show. <laughs> um, a lot of them said, a lot of ladies said they could not respect their husbands if they were the breadwinner. Respect their husbands? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so, 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 okay. So, I mean, uh, was okay. it hard so, so I got, to I, keep that respect as the man? <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So, so hold on, hold on, hold on. So, let, let me say Hold on, wait, I gotta ask the wife. I gotta ask the wife. Okay, okay, okay. So, honestly, as, I'm honestly asking you, okay? Um, as a matter of fact, nah. I don't, I don't, I don't even want to have a conversation. We're gonna save that for the table uncut. Oh, okay. 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 We're gonna t- I can answer. Okay. No, no, no. We're gonna, we're gonna save that for the table uncut, y'all. <laughs> okay. uh, listen, I got a new show launching. Go over to Patreon if y'all wanna hear this answer. Me and Ashley are talking in depth. Mm-hmm. We are talking in depth about can she respect her husband to do that? So, go over to Patreon. Uh, and check it out. The link will be in the link below. Because <laughs> you were like... Man, I, man you, got, you got me sweating up under my armpits. Like, I was ready, man. <laughs> it's just... Res- res- when you say respect, like... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> res- <laughs> Respect on it. Yo, we're going to see what hey, she's yeah, saying, yeah, bro. We'll see. Okay. We're going to see what she's hey, saying. Yeah, I'm we're curious. Gonna, to see. We're going to see. Now, let me ask okay, you this question. Okay. Let me ask you this question. No facial responses, mm-hmm. okay? CJ, take her off, because she may not, <laughs> may not. Just put it directly on him. Do you think your wife still respected you when you were not the breadwinner? Absolutely. When, why you say that? I... Let me ask you this question. Okay. Do you think she was struggling during that time? Struggling to respect me as a man? Respect you as her man and as the head of the house? No. I, and this is the reason why. Um, if a dollar amount at that point <laughs> determined her respect for me, not the drive, the dedication, and everything that we had been through up through that point, if just because I'm not making enough money at that point, she doesn't respect me, then I question her at that point. You know, <laughs> like you can't take away if I like if example, I lose my job. Let's just say for the sake of the comment, COVID hits. Yeah. So many people lost their job. You don't respect your husband now just because he's making less money than you? Because because COVID decided, like, I mean, the respect word is the thing. Now, like, I mean, 
that doesn't take my work, work, work ethic away, my drive, my, my, my ability to still provide as a husband. You know, it, it doesn't... I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. Like, I just... Woo, that's tough. Yo, what's going on, fam? Real quick, so we can get back to today's show. Listen, we have a brand new home. Yes, so we not just have YouTube, but I've also created a Patreon community. So you and I can connect better. Now, I know I am extremely late to the Patreon game, but here's why. Trust, loyalty, and death. You see, I value our relationship, and I want to make sure that I created a community that can help you get closer to your goals. So in this community, you guys, we're gonna be able to chat more one-on-one. -on -one. I'm gonna be doing live streams only in Patreon, only on Patreon. I also created a brand new show called The Table Uncut. It's only 20, 25 minutes, but I bring people to the table uncut with wine, with some little bourbon, and we're having an honest conversation about life. What are some things that we're doing? It's unscripted and it's real, raw, and relevant. Not only is that, I've also created a private group to where you all would get actually access to some of my new products coming up, some of the events I'm going to be speaking at. You can get into those for free. So listen, I'm going to drop the Patreon community link in today's show notes. I want you to go check it out. Come join the community. Come join the family. I'm cutting it off at a certain number so the first few people to get over there can be a part of this community. It's your boy Ayo, and I approve this message. Let's get back to today's show. Yo, we just now tuned <laughs> into the show. Yo, it's your boy Anthony O'Neill. Welcome back to the table. I got my boy uh, Jeffrey and his amazing, beautiful wife, my sister. Uh, not my blood sister, but I call her my sister. Um, Ashley's in the building. They are the owners of Get Fitix right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, one of the top gyms in the state of Tennessee. And I would definitely even say one of the top gyms um, in the United States of America, man. They focus on not just the uh, health part, the body part, but also the mental. Uh, they hold you accountable. Um, and their routine really helps you uh, become successful, not just physically, but also mentally and even health-wise internally uh, when it comes to your eating with your mindset. So um, if you just now are tuning into the show, hit that subscribe button. And I promise you, I promise you this much, uh, you will really enjoy uh, today's conversation. Um, so all right, let's, 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 let's jump over into another subject uh, because I have you all here today because I have a lot of single people who watch me. Mm -hmm. And we all know, I'm gonna keep it a buck on this show, because it's my show, okay? <laughs> uh, I want to look sexy as heck. Okay. I, I want to have a chest. Mm -hmm. I want to have them arms, mm -hmm. you know, like you. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you got to do that when you got this kind of shirt on, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I, 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 I want to have the eight pack. Mm -hmm. You know, ladies want to have, you know, and I'm saying exactly what ladies told me too, for y'all thinking, and I asked her this, can I say this respectfully? And she said, you can say this. Um, but ladies say they want to have a uh, a slim, thick body. They said they want to have a flat stomach, a small waist, and a nice booty. They mm -hmm. said big. I'm just going to say nice. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the proper word is glute. Is that mm -hmm. the right word? Glutes, Glute? yeah. Glutes, a.k.a. booty. booty. Okay. Uh, let's walk through, for our individuals who are watching right now, uh, what should men do and what should women do to get the results that they want? So for, for the men, when it comes to our chest, our eight pack, mm -hmm. you know, our eight pack. I mean, can you really have an eight pack? You can have a 12. Yeah. You can have like side obliques. Yeah. You, it's, you can have it all. You can have it all. Yeah. yeah. And then you can have, you know, definitely not the arms. Yeah, you definitely have an arm. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't really care about legs. So let's not even talk no, about we legs. No, we need to. It's a well-rounded body. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think men don't like working out legs though? I don't, I think I think that's a very bad. This is like a meme that caught on, like okay. something that just has been said, and people just think it's funny, you yeah. know. What I mean? um, but any serious person that works out, um, legs are a big part of their routine, um, especially for men because um, um, working legs because it's such a big muscle increases testosterone. Absolutely, which is the number one thing that makes us different from our counterparts, you know? Right. So um, so why would you not work those? Wow. Um, now... Now, when you say testosterone, now we got to break that down because mm -hmm. we have some people who are watching saying, what is that? Okay. And maybe a little weird, but I'm going to help you all out. Mm -hmm. You know, I got you. What is that? So people can understand what that is. So testosterone is basically the building blocks for muscle. Okay, okay. And then it's also 
Uh, um, help me out here, nurse. Uh, <laughs> help me. Uh, what's the word? I just went blank. Hormone. A hormone. <laughs> See, this is why she. Yeah. She's just so y'all know, she is a yeah. full time nurse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Certified and everything. Yeah. On the side, outside of the business. So it's a hormone that typically is higher in men, which makes <clears throat> the man a man. You know. So um, and then estrogen is the counterpart, which makes it's typically higher in women. Right. And we all have estrogen and testosterone. It's just higher in men. And women, depending I'll come on. Come back to that. Yeah, she, to she'll come muscle. back to that. Okay, to muscle. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I mean, essentially, like, if you want to build muscle, <clears throat> then you have to, you know, work it, um, and then, you know, give yourself the proper nutrition and everything, yeah. and to get to where you're trying to go. Okay. You know? So, I mean, if you want to ask me, the number one thing to start off with, it, to start with a workout routine, is to actually just start. Like, I think the biggest thing is people, they bite off more than they can chew. Yeah. Like, don't, you can search the internet and find whatever you want. You can get on social media and find the perfect guy or girl that you want to look like, and that's fine. Um, but they didn't do that in one search, <laughs> you know? So um, I think just cutting out some time each day, 15, 30 minutes to just do something, some type mm -hmm. of movement mm -hmm. is where you need to start it. I mean, yeah. and if, you, if you're past that point, <laughs> salutes you you're already 90 percent in the battle i think at that point but if you're not then just start so let's start yeah i, I want to have you know uh, guys are very big on our arms mm -hmm. where do we start yeah yeah to get our our arms detailed and just looking real good and yeah 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 so i mean it depends on the person you know um everybody got their own perception of what Look, what looks good, right? Okay. So some guys are going for, oh, I want to be big. You know, I'm talking about like massive. Yeah. Um, other guys want to be lean. Yeah. You know, I want to be, be ripped. Lean. Okay. Yeah. And so, ripped. Yeah. So and a lot of lean and ripped, um, just like a lot of being big yeah. is calories in versus calories out. Mm -hmm. So nutrition is the number one thing. Okay. Like, so um, I know people don't want to hear that, but that's right. the number one thing. Right. Um, but. Outside of that, like, let's it's, you say arms, like biceps, triceps, right? Okay. So um, if I was to start a new person out on anything, first thing I would start them out with would probably be barbell curls. Okay. Um, it's an exercise that you can easily load on a bar and you can easily maneuver up and down. Okay. Right? So, and it's the, probably, I would say, one of the best exercises to add mass to your arms. So if you're trying to add mass to it, yeah. that barbell, just gripping it. And, and mass everything. means more muscle. Yeah, more muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, nutrition. <laughs> Plays yeah. a part in getting that mass, but like working the most of the bicep, I would say barbell curls. Barbell curls. Yeah, so straight up and down. Okay. Um, and should you go fast, slow, medium? So it's different types of lifts. I and each trainer has his own thing. Yeah. For me, it's time under tension. So okay. it's slow and controlled movements. Yep. Um, so a weight that you can always control, gotcha. not anything that's too heavy that you can't control it. Okay. Now, it does have its place. So before you guys go get on my Instagram and look back and be like, oh, he jerking on it. It is a place for heavy weights. Yeah. You know, so it's a purpose for that. Okay. You know, sometimes I cheat reps just to get myself uh, used to feeling the heavy load. So okay. sometimes I might overload the bar and just use my body weight, you know. But for the most part, especially on something isolated like arms, yeah. you want to be able to control it. So it's not so much about the pounds, but more about the control. Um um, so bicep curls, barbell curls, hammer curls, just turning your hands, um, making it more of a neutral grip, works the inside of the bicep. Um, I would say triceps, uh, best thing you can do at home or at the gym would be dips. Um, so finding a chair or a bench or something that you can put back on and just dipping down. Dipping you know? down. Yeah, so keeping your shoulders straight. Um, elbows at a 90 degree, you know. Yeah. Um, the more advanced you get, you can put your feet out further, you know, all that good stuff. So those are the things I would say to help work on getting your arms where it needs to be. I love it. And this is what we're going to do for you all. I was just looking on my phone to make sure I was correct. Uh, but I want y'all to text the word HEALTH, H-E-A-L-T-H, to 615-930-3431. I had to make sure I remember my own number. 615-930-3431. Text the word HEALTH to 615-930-3431. 303431. Uh, we'll make sure that's on the screen and in the show descriptions. Uh, Jeffrey and Ashley are that. Actually, they're going to be giving us a free PDF mm -hmm. uh, to where they're going to actually work through, actually walk through some of the things we could be doing from home to get our bodies right. I'm going to tell you right now, ladies, what Ashley got in store for y'all is actually <laughs> pretty dope. Um, okay, cool. So now we got the arms. Mm -hmm. uh, so what about 
Now, do ladies work out their arms? Yes. They should. I, see, I don't, I don't, when I'm in a gym, I never see ladies working their arms. What kind of gym you at, though? I mean, when we was <laughs> at the YMCA, they were only working legs. I'm Man, not, that's true. Not even gonna lie, when I first started, I was more focused on my lower body. I would focus more during the week see? on lower body. See? But she just confirmed. They what I just are said. doing a disservice if they don't. Why is with that? Their body, because you don't look balanced. Just like how men don't look balanced if they yeah. don't do mm -hmm. lower body. Yeah. yeah. Why is it important to do upper body for ladies compared to the lower body? Because for women. Naturally, we have bigger lower bodies because we're we are designed to give birth. Yeah. And so the natural birthing position is a squat. Yeah. So, of course, our legs are going to be stronger. So we have a nice, solid bottom half. Yeah. But if you want that hourglass shape, you need to work the top. Because yeah. you don't have a bottom glass. Okay. You have an hourglass. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Bottom glass. Hourglass. Mm. So how do we do the hourglass? Because I hear this from a lot of ladies that they want that, you know, that that small waist, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, slim body. What are the key things that we, we, <laughs> that ladies could be doing uh, to have that kind of body? You could do it too. I wouldn't. I no, mean, I don't I want that. <laughs> okay. I want to be lean and cut. I don't want no big Never booty. Never skip a leg day, I don't bro. want no big booty. <laughs> but they say that, guys, we need to focus more on our glutes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get a lot of that is on squats. That doesn't mean you have to do. Now, you got to understand, a lot of people are seeing right. some of these Instagram workouts where they're glute focused. Those are cool for Instagram, but the core workouts that build your glutes mm -hmm. are things that are power. That's why a lot of your athletes, football players, basketball players, they do uh, front squats, back squats, power cleans, deadlifts. <sighs> Those things are what you know, build your glutes, build your you know, glutes. leg press, That's things of a, that nature. All right. And that wouldn't make it look so feminine for yeah. a man to wear glutes. Yeah. So, okay. I'll do legs, but I don't <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we're gonna, do, we're gonna get you to do some hip thrusts next week. <laughs> you already tried, you, you made me do that one day. <laughs> I felt so uncomfortable. It, it is. It is. It's I was different. like, why am I? Whoa. Yeah, it's, 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 I was like, I don't like this workout. It's different. It's I feel different. a little bit too soft. Right but now. but like, let me Put tell you me something. back up beneath the barbell. Were you not sore for two or three days? I was sore, sore. for a week. A week. And in spots, I didn't want to be exactly. sore. Exactly. Yeah. I'm saying because you never worked that. The only time, the only time men work that is when you get in and out of a car. Think about it. That's the only time. That is the only time. Yes. Yeah. But you know what though? When I was doing my research for golfing. Mm -hmm. They suggest that yeah. because it helps yep. out my hips. The hinge, so. yep. yep. Okay, cool. So, all right, Ashley, the ladies are listening. The ladies are watching. I hear you, ladies. Some of these ladies just had babies. They still have the baby weight on. They want to mm -hmm. slim down. And I, and I totally respect, you know, these ladies. How do they get that, that slim body, the slim stomach, the slim waist, you know, um, and the, the nice glutes, you know? Um, because I do believe, here's what I have learned about ladies. When you all look good, you all are completely, totally different creatures. You're, you're more better at home. You're more better in, um, on the job. You're more better in your career. Like you all, you operate differently. And I think that's maybe yeah. for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But really more so on the ladies' side. So help our queens out. How do they get, you know, the, the small waist? We'll start with the hip thrust. Okay. So... Hip thrust itself, you, well, you said small waist, but yeah. how it does help is when you're thrusting up and down, you are engaging your core a lot. Okay, okay. So that's keeping it. But the main focus of um, getting that core small is going to be your diet. Ah, what you eating? Yeah. I it's going to be more. But, you know, um, but that hip thrust movement is more essentially like a crunch, wow. a reverse crunch. But, um, but yeah. Diet is going to be for that. Okay, diet, diet. So it sounds like diet is really everything. It's, it's, it's. again, you can't spot pick where you lose weight, right? Okay. So you can definitely pick where you can gain muscle because yeah. you can target muscles and make them grow. Yeah. But typically, you can't spot pick where you lose fat. Like, you hear people say, I lost 15 pounds, but I still got this stomach. Well, yeah, but that, that's the last, your body, Pose it in your stomach. Yeah. Um, some people get lean around their arms very quickly and then don't get lean around their legs, you know? Yeah. So you can't spot pick. But like she was talking about with the hip thrust yeah. and um, a couple more exercises that she's done, like kickbacks and... Kickbacks? What are kickbacks? Yeah, so kickbacks. 
kick that. So like when you're kicking your feet up in the air? So when you're in that, you have a mat on the floor and you're yeah. in that like, your hands and knees position. Yeah. Um, you can do it with a band, without a band, depends yeah. on where you're at. There's so many different variations to do it, but you're just essentially taking that heel keeping that knee at that 90 degree angle and pushing that heel through the ceiling. Uh, and really squeezing the glutes. Yeah. Okay. And again, remember, you asked a while ago about how fast should you go. Right. At no point, this is my muscle connection, like, mm -hmm. you have to take your time, squeeze at the top, contract the muscle that's being worked. Yeah. Okay. So when you're pushing that heel through the ceiling, push that heel through the ceiling, embrace the push at the top, Bring it back, swing it through, you know? So yeah. that's one of those things that targets the bottom of the glutes, yes. you know, the little cup that yeah. women, you know, want so bad, you know? What about these? I'm seeing a lot of these influencers, and I'm like, man, this is, has to mm -hmm. be fake, but they promote these waistbands. Yes. Yeah. Does it work? Yes. It's more muscle memory. Yes, yeah. It's muscle memory. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. not, I mean, you have different types of waist trainers. So you have sweat bands, you have the extra corset type waist trainer. So it really is just depending on what you're targeting, but essentially it's muscle memory and training your your core to stay tight. And you hear a lot of people, a lot of trainers say, it don't work, don't ever buy those things, I would never tell my client, and that's fine. Okay. The question, does does it work? Depending on what you're going for, gotcha. right? Gotcha. So is it is it gonna give you a small waist? No. Okay. Now, can you put that on? put the sweat band on and you sweat more there. Same principle of, you remember you used to see that guy when you were younger wrapped in trash bags or sweats in the middle of the summer running like crazy? Right, right. Because he had to drop 15 pounds of water weight? Yeah, yeah. That's essentially what a sweat band does. Okay. Like, so like, if I wrap my waist and I'm running, then I just use lose more, I sweat more there. Mm -hmm. So um, typically people who are at a certain low body fat percentage, yes. guys that compete, ladies that compete, um, or you're trying to get ready for that little beach trip and you want to show a little bit of abs and you're there, Yeah, that works. Yeah. Now the corsets and stuff, yeah, now if you tighten those things up, it really does. Muscle memory gets in there and then you can go into another hint, uh, little hook. hook. Same thing back in the medieval days. These wow. women used to, same principle, you know? So um, this idea that, oh, it don't, no, it don't work. It does not take the place of diet, nutrition, yeah. and routines. Right. No, all right? I think it's, I think women in particular use it to hide mm -hmm. the fat that they have. And they're thinking that it's gonna make them shrink the fat when it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Like, because if you're a if you're a bigger lady, then you're gonna need more diet and, well, mm -hmm. the diet and the exercise part. The waist training can come later. For real. Yeah, and waist trainers are supplements. Yeah. So think about that. Yeah. I always say supplements are things that supplement your routine and regimen. Yeah. So if you go buy a waist trainer and you ain't even on a routine, what do you supplement? I got you. <laughs> you know, so th that's the way I look at that. So yeah. anything that you do, when it comes down, that's why I said the number one thing is to start with something. Yeah. Pick a routine and a regimen, something to do. Yeah. Then you supplement things in as needed. Yeah. Cardio. Is cardio important? Yes. It is. Mm -hmm. I hate cardio. Mm -hmm. I hate it. What kind of cardio should ladies be doing? I like variations. So I like, um, we have treadmills at the gym, but the curved treadmills, I, I love them. I just love running on them. Yeah. Um, but running on the treadmill is a good way to do cardio. Um, that's heart health, okay. too. Um, but then also the stair climber. I know you see a lot. I see a lot of, <laughs> of ladies on the stair yeah. climbers when I, when I go into like other gyms. They love doing them. And then they be doing like this little, they be on there squatting. And I'm like, why are you on there doing squats? Yeah. What is that? What? Why? So you're doing cardio and working on yeah. glutes? Yeah, because essentially you're walking up a step. You're doing like a step up. Okay. So when you're walking up the stairs as they're going, yeah, you're a lot. You're allowing yourself to kind of squat or yeah. lunge yeah. up. Yeah. So you're actually targeting um, both, and it's more like a weighted cardio. Yeah, man, I love it. I love it. Listen, you guys, uh, they're offering some amazing, some amazing stuff. I really want you all to. Um, get their PDF. It's 100% free. Uh, just text the number 615-930-3431. Um, text the word HEALTH to 615-930-3431. You get their free PDF and they're going to give you everything that men and ladies should be doing. So ladies, if we just had a baby, yo, listen, get this. They're going to give you some things you can work out at home. 
brothers. You know what I'm saying? Here's some things you can work out in the gym. And then if y'all want to go deeper with them, you know, maybe get some one-on-one -on -one coaching, get some one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, counseling or whatever you need from them. Their content information will be on that PDF. Reach out to them. I promise you so much. You will not regret it. Uh, these guys have changed my life when it comes to health. Um, and I'm greatly, greatly appreciative um, of them. Family, man. Um, and, and I'm going to go here within the Black culture, right? Mm -hmm. For me, I believe family is my number one ministry, my number one assignment. Mm -hmm. You all have a daughter. Mm -hmm. um, how how important is to to especially to everyone, but even to the Black community? Uh, because a lot of us, they didn't grow up seeing our fathers in the same house mm -hmm. or seeing even, even our mothers in mm -hmm. the same house. Um, we didn't grow up with that family stuck together, ate together. I mean, I remember back in the days, man, we would sit at the table mm -hmm. and yeah. we would pray together. Yeah. We would talk about the day together. Yeah. We, we would eat together. No one could leave the table, yeah. you know, until all the food was gone yeah. for one. You had to finish the food. You had to finish the food. And I had to be dismissed yeah. from yeah. the table yeah. Yeah. from my parents. Uh, but how important to you all is family, especially as young entrepreneurs and as, as a young black couple? I let you go first. So important. Mm -hmm. um, I just think a lot of people, though, I just really want to make it clear. We never force our daughter to do this. This yeah. is our chosen lifestyle. Yeah. Um, she just falls into it because she sees it every day. Yeah. And we're That's an so example good. to her. Yeah. So, yeah. so for me, um, especially... I mean, my mom stayed at home. My dad got up every morning at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. and came home at 5 p.m. And she had dinner ready. Um, we sat around the table, like you said. Got in trouble when my dad was praying for five minutes because me and my twin brother was fighting with each <laughs> other, you know. Um, but we had to be dismissed, you know, at yeah. the end. Yeah. But that was family time that I got to see my dad and mom in a light that, you know, I'll never forget. So for me, different day and age, different time. I get it. Um, but for me, what I'm building and what we're building together um, never should compromise my relationship with my daughter mm. or my relationship with my wife. Mm. Right? So, um, and I, we could talk millions of minutes about how it is to run a business with your spouse. Yeah. It's hard. Um, how it is to... What's the a, hardest thing, honestly? Um, running a business with with Ashley. I, I think, for me, is... Just I, one, because I, I, I want you to go home and still have... <laughs> it's bad to sleep in tonight. <laughs> it's my house. Hey, just, oh, just respect. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Um, um, what is the hardest thing launching a business with your wife? Um, I call it the cut-on, cut-off switch. I can cut it on and be a boss. I can leave it at work and cut it off and be fine. That ride home, I can already tell. She, she ain't happy. She ain't going <laughs> home. Look, so then I don't like to have business conversations at home. At home. If she, if she was late to a class, when she gets to school, when she get back to um, work the next morning, I'm like, hey, remember you were late? We could have talked about this at home. <laughs> no, we couldn't. <laughs> because it has to be a fine line. Fine and when line. we first opened, that was the hardest thing. She, I would put my businessman hat on and say, yo, I, this is what we need to do. This is what I expected it to And take it off. And she, she still has it on. I'm like, would you I, agree I, with I, that? Well, I mean, I think women are naturally more emotional. <laughs> yes. But, I mean, sometimes, because I do work full time, <laughs> we do have to ha carry the conversation on yeah, at home. Like, true, when we true, have time. True. But the thing about it is, it's the difference between carrying the conversation on and then holding that conversation as one of those things that you're upset about. When it's just business. For me, it's just business. Business was business. Right? It was <laughs> done. But it's just business. It's just business. Like, uh, you yelled at me. Yeah, I did. Well, it was business. Like, <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't, you should have, it should have been done this way. Da, da, da. Because my thing is, when we have employees and stuff, if I hold those employees and they see me hold those employees to that standard, mm. and then she, or not just her, anybody, even, cause my daughter works for us too. If my daughter does something that one of my front desk people, wouldn't get away with it, and I let her get away with it. Yeah, yeah. Then okay. I have to. That's a that's a hard. It is, line, bro. But 
now we we we're at a very good point now where we understand that. Well, she understands that if like yo, when Jeffrey gets really serious about something, that's a big deal. And I might not understand it, but it's, it's a, big a big deal because he's looking at it from that perspective. He's not attacking me right. as a wife, you know. So um what is the hardest thing building a business with your husband? Isn't that another episode? <laughs> <laughs> is that Damn, she got a list, was, bro. You don't want me. You don't want she me in the room. Got a list. You, you don't want me in the room. No, man. Oh, <laughs> come on, give me one. Okay. Give me one, and we'll talk about some other things on, on, on the, the table. Page. Uncut. Ooh, yeah. You know I agree. I agree. So you're page. saying that you two are not on the same I page often. I wanted a often. pink wall, and he wanted a green wall. I Ooh, mean. don't tell me the pink and so, green wall story. So, <laughs> so okay, cool then. Who makes that decision? If it's a, if if it's oh, a, a respect here. <laughs> <laughs> so really, the man makes the decision. No, See, I have a question about. So, that. so let me tell you this: the man made the decision in that aspect. But let me, let me, let me. Okay, okay. America. I, I was America. about to say, let me, I'm like, let, if because you know the lady saying, right. "Now wait a minute, I'm confused." No, she no, was no. a breadwinner no. at one point in time. She didn't got no say so. Yeah, no, no, no. But the business. Let, 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 let me, let me flip that. America. Let me listen. To me. <laughs> so, example: she's a nurse. Right. I respect her, and I feel she's great at it. Right. right. My daughter, and she, you can ask her this, my daughter could sneeze one time, and right. it could be nothing. Mm -hmm. Baby, what do I need to do? Ask me just sneezed, da 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 da, da. She makes the calls in that point. Okay. I don't step on her toes. I, I respect her in that field. Okay. I, when it comes down to business, the business side of things, the reason why I get to make that decision yeah. is because I've earned that res respect, respect at that point that she respects me enough as a business owner. That's not saying she don't get any decisions or anything. Right. Like, it's times I come to her like, yo, hey, we want this, do we? Yeah, okay, cool. These are the two options, you know? But, go ahead, oh, go ahead. Go. He likes to say that he demands his respect, but he did try to give me my glitter wall that I wanted to <laughs> see, she, see, she keeps talking about this wall. I mean, no, I'm just using it as like yeah. an example. But no, he, he does make better choices than I do in the business aspect, so yes. Mm. I will allow him to make that decision. Wow. And again, it may not come without a fight, but Yeah. But I don't think we paint everything with a broad one broad stroke. Like yeah. you're we're asking specifics based on a business who makes that final decision. Wow. A business and a craft that um I like I the God himself blessed me with the vision of what I saw get fit as, right? So at that point, I could have been a, the man and just Snatched it away and said, "You, this is my thing." Mm -hmm. But um, I took that, included her into what that vision was, and said, "Hey, babe, how do you fit into this?" Mm -hmm. But at no point, though, it's kind of like God giving you the will to drive a car, mm -hmm. and then you let go of driving the car and let somebody else take a, over your blessing <laughs> and mm -hmm. drive it away. Mm -hmm. She can come along with the ride of what that blessing is right. because I'm leading that business yeah. at that point because it's my calling. Yeah. Same thing as with her being a nurse. Like we're going to implement nursing into our fitness, uh, into our gym, into our studio. I won't step foot in that realm of things. Wow. That's her calling. That's I what she does. I wouldn't say that because I'll manage the management. Thing. Yeah, I'll manage the thing. Yeah. But that's yeah. that's the management side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But at no point would I look at her and say, Well, because I'm a man, you shouldn't do X, Y. What no. What I no. hear you saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is hey, here's my strengths. Yeah. Here's the vision that God has given me for us. Yeah. Huh? She's saying, hey, here's my strengths. And here is the vision that God is giving me for us as well. And y'all have combined those. Let's see how we can work those together. And it's like, hey, this is your strength. I'm going to trust you in that lane. Yeah, yeah. This is your strength. I'm going to trust you in that lane. It's not, I'm the man. No. Shut up. Do no. this. No. I'm the woman. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It's, it's, nah, babe. This, this is the vision. Yeah. We both submit to the vision. Yeah. And we both know our lane to help us get, yeah. get us to that vision. And timing is everything. Because you remember, when we first moved to Nashville, I had to put my... Vision to the side, and she was the breadwinner, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I had to be okay with that, mm -hmm. right? As time progressed, mm -hmm. she was working twelve-hour shifts. The business wasn't where it, our new business wasn't where she wanted it to be, where we wanted it to be. But she was sick of working twelve-hour shifts, and not so she took a back seat. Wow, trusted me. Wow. So then we got our time back, and now that the business is going, we're at a point right now where. We, we're opening up another um, yeah. aspect to our gym. We're opening up a meal prep company to go along with our um, 
gym, and it's going to have the medical side, medical weight loss and all that. Now God has saw that vision, mm -hmm. took it, and he's rewarded us for being mindful, and now she can use her craft inside of our business, you know. And she's also learned to love the fitness side of it, too, like, you know, so... Um, I think, I think the main thing that people need to understand, especially if you're going to go into business with your spouse, at no point do you need to undermine them. Mm. Like, like um, you can be stern, and they can hate you at times, yeah. and they will. Yeah. But um, delivery is everything, but you got to also understand who's delivering it, too, because she knows. Like, I, I'm from Backwoods, Arkansas, yeah. and my inside voice is somebody else's way outside voice, wow. you know? So wow. um, she could... At times, because when I get passionate about something, I get overly excited. I start to talk loud and everything like that. So she um, would sometimes take that and be like, yo. In your veins. And I get veiny, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm lean. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I get veiny. Like, so she could see that I'm passionate about it. But over time, she understood. That that's not him mad at me or upset. It's him passionate about it. Yeah. That's his vision. That's how he gets excited about it. So um, we, we learn to manage, function, you know, yeah. so. You know, we we we're coming to the end of the show, man. And I I, I we can I man, I got, I have more questions literally written down here that I believe um, we can talk, but we've already been talking for about an hour. Mm. So I got like maybe two more questions. Um, as parents, right, mm. especially minority parents, raising a child, watching you all, how does it feel to be creating something, building something, and your daughter is watching? Now, I'm not knocking people who have an 8 to 5 mm -hmm. job because yeah, I believe no. that's important. It's I don't want to knock that yeah. at all because not everyone's supposed to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But I do believe when it comes to the African-American community, mm -hmm. ownership is yeah. how we close that wealth gap. I agree. 100%. And then ownership is how we pass down legacy to our kids. Yep. How does it feel for you two? Your daughter's watching you become a nurse and y'all building this. She's watching her father set the example. How does it feel when you look at your daughter, you're building something, your daughter's watching you? As parents, how does that feel? I'll let you go first. So for me, um, because I do work outside the hospital now, and I'm, I'm work well. The nursing part is still remote, but then also working um, in the studio, she's getting to see that women can work and they mm. can um, be a part of the household in that aspect, and not just be. And, and no disrespect to any women that. I stay at home because I, I, that's a hard job and I would never <laughs> yeah, be able to do it. So, um, but I wouldn't mind my wife staying at home. I, yeah. lie. I wouldn't mind mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of um, yeah. Sorry, I didn't get that. But <laughs> um, anyway, so I think it's just really important for her to see me be able to have that work ethic um, so she can know that she can have that role as mm. she transitions, but it's starting her at a young age. Wow. Um, the other thing too is as a mom, it is sometimes hard for you to be a working mom and they say, mommy, I miss you, you know? Mm. And now it's more of like her thought process kind of transitioned like, okay, mommy's not going to the hospital anymore. And I'm like, well, mommy might go back into the hospital, but mommy, I don't want you to go back into mm. the hospital. She wants wow. to be there. She wants me to be there. She needs me to be there. And yeah. so we are blessed with the opportunity to be able to allow me to work from home as a nurse, so she can see that I'm still working, but also be a part of the family business and see me be able to navigate two different roles. Yeah, as a matter so. of fact. Hey, uh, CJ, bring my little niece up here, Matt. I'm gonna bring her on the show. <laughs> Bye, she's coming up here. What's your thoughts? So, um, mine's short and sweet, man. Um, it really didn't hit me into COVID. So we were shut down for 56 days. My daughter wasn't in school. Business got shut down. I'm a Black-owned business in the middle of Nashville. Mind, mind you, mm -hmm. I moved from Arkansas, didn't have anybody here, and the year prior to COVID, won Nashville's best personal trainer. So I had just started getting a very good name for myself, and the business shuts down. Three weeks into the shutdown, well, two and a half weeks into the shutdown, I decided, hey, we're gonna come out of this, we're gonna rebrand. Mm. We're gonna move people forward. I want my clients to know that we're still here for them. That rebrand, me, Ashley, mm -hmm. my daughter, we did it. For we, real. We knocked down the walls. We painted. One night we were sitting there, we were painting. Come here, little niece. We were sitting there, we were painting. Close the door. Come on this side. You're going to sit on my lap. Come sit on my lap over go, here. Go, go yeah. yeah, come on sit on my lap over here. I want the people to see you. I want the, I'm going to close my lap just so they can see you. Come on over here. You be over there picking on me in the gym. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we were sitting there, we were painting. She started painting with me, and she said, um, I said, ask me, do you miss school? She was like, yeah, I do miss school. And she was like, but I like being here with you working and painting. She kept painting. To her, it wasn't that big deal. <laughs> to me, it was a very big deal because even though school teaches our kids so much, mm -hmm. my daughter just took a pandemic Mm. Time off, and she learned valuable work ethic mm. lessons. Mm. She now works my front desk three days a week. You know, so um, she works my front desk three days a week. Mm -hmm. um, she has a set schedule that she runs, and she doesn't know any different. Mm. So, as a black business owner, mm -hmm. and her being there, it's a standard that's set. You know, you always want to be that dad that say, "Hey, I want to make sure my daughter does this, and she expects this." Right. Well, hopefully, my daughter <laughs> knows that and she expects that now. You know, so. Yeah. Um, you like that's... working out with your parents? Yes. Do you work out with them every day or maybe like every other day? Mm, not every day. Not every day? Yes, sometimes. Who do you like working out with more, your mom or your dad? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you won't get a whoop. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, you about to get that girl a whoop. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, <laughs> Yo, she's like, wait, how do I say this? I love mommy and I love daddy and yeah. I love this. You know what? I, I want to say one last thing about mm -hmm. her. Yeah. I think what's so important for us to be able to work together is that she sees that. Mm -hmm. She sees the hard times mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. She sees the easy times, mm -hmm. but she sees the times where we can come together mm -hmm. and like yeah. really make it work. Yep. That's one thing, man. I, there's like two couples, you all, and then my brother-in-law and my sister, very big on the black family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and including their kids in as much. And when I look at y'all's Instagram, y'all have to check out their Instagram. My little niece be having me cracking up with y'all's little workouts, <laughs> uh, snippets, what y'all do on Instagram, man. I mean, check them out. We're going to drop all the information uh, below, but she is the future. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Give me some love. You going to run the business, baby? That's right. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So before we go, here's a fun question for all the guys. You know, the guys are watching right now. Mm -hmm. You know, when we was back out in YMCA, y'all, yeah. I'm gonna put myself out there. You know, I tried to holler at a chick. Yeah. In the <laughs> yeah. YMCA. Yeah. Yeah. And it did work. It, Let's it, be yeah. real. Yeah, it did. Uh, I ain't gonna say her name. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Don't say her name. Because uh, she was a bad looking chick. <laughs> yeah, but sure. and we're real cool today. Um, but um, <laughs> is it appropriate to approach a woman? in the gym while she is working out. Don't interrupt my workout. Don't interrupt no, the workout. Kidding. Don't, just don't interrupt my set. Okay, okay, okay. No, it's okay. Like, to be honest, I mean, if we weren't together, like, I would want a guy that would be Ooh. working out too. That's <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just taking this in. Taking this in. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't want to be together, if that's what you're no, saying. No, nobody's saying that. What are you talking about? Like, I'm just saying, like, I think as a woman, like, I think it's... I think it's perfectly acceptable for a man to, I mean, if that's what you mean. I think it's appropriate, spouse, too, as long as you're not, fine. like you said, interrupting yeah. her from her set, yeah. and you're not bothering her. And if she shows no interest, bounce. Yeah. All right, so this is what you do. Oh okay. my God. This, this, yeah, this, this, this is how it works. All right. Teach the guys. So you see Shorty I'm over close. there. No, no, she good. She good. She good. She good. She good. She good. <laughs> so you see Shorty over there. She doing squats, right? Yeah, yeah. So empty rack right next to her, right? Oh. First thing you need don't to do. Don't grab the rack. First thing you need to do. Yeah, the, the rack. Not the yeah, Anyway. So <laughs> first thing you need to do. First, first thing you need to do is go over to the rack next to her and start loading up the bar. Make sure you can out squat her, though. Don't get over there yeah. and embarrass yourself. Yeah. Okay? That's one. Because your wife can out-squat me. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, she already yeah, did. She, yeah, she did. Yeah. So, um, so go over, start working next to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everything is about body language at that point. You can tell if somebody's interested in you. Yeah, because like, when she start going a little bit lower on that squat... Yeah, that might be. That might be. Hey. But when she start adding more weight... Yeah. Because she's struggling... Yeah. Because she wants you to spot her. Hey. Uh, well, yeah, don't don't be that weirdo though. <laughs> don't be that weirdo. And, like, I think that's the thing though. Like, don't be a weirdo with it. Like, if you are with, or if you're attracted to somebody, or you see somebody in the gym. Yeah. Then you know it's plenty of space and opportunity. 
go up next to them, see how that works, you know, do some curls, see, and it's, hey, how are you, you know, but just don't make it weird, like, and don't be that guy that follow girls around the gym, like, don't be that dude. Don't do that dude. Yeah, yeah, don't don't be that dude. Don't we ain't got to worry about that with you, because you don't no, she gonna beat them up. parents' gym, so yeah. we ain't worried about that. So I, and I, I definitely think in this day and age, like, yeah. I mean... I don't know, because we, have, we haven't been single for 13 years, so mm. I don't know the the proper even way to date somebody. Can't you, like, click on an app and see who's single in a room now or something like that? So what you could oh, do. Oh, you can't? <laughs> Honestly, I thought, thought you could. I thought it was something on, like Jeff, that. You've you, you, you been out the game for 13 years, but that, that's, nah, bro. Hey, I've been that was out. The case, boy, I need, I need that app right now. <laughs> Hey, so oh, people, God. it's that that'd be a great app opportunity for anybody out there. You know? yeah, absolutely, man. Well, hey, I appreciate y'all for joining the show. Thank you, little sis, for coming on up in here and joining us. You was down there in my office uh, playing some game or some of that, right? Oh, my Lord. All right. All right. <laughs> y'all, listen, don't forget to text uh, HEALTH, H-E-A-L-T-H, to 615-930-3431. Uh, Jeffrey and his amazing wife and daughter, uh, my little niece, have this amazing... Uh, PDF that will help you and the entire family get fit, get the bodies that you want. Because do not forget, our bodies is one of the key ingredients to building wealth. And I'm going to leave you with today's scripture and affirmation of the show. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Today's affirmation, I want y'all to repeat this after me. Drop it if you're watching us live right now or drop it in the comments if you're uh, driving and you're listening to this on the podcast or if you're in the shower listening to this um, as well. Repeat after me. I am fit. I am strong. I am powerful. I'm going to say that one more time. I am fit. I am strong, I am powerful, and I'm going to add this in there, and I am wealthy. Yo, it's your boy Anthony O'Neill. Here with my little sis. A sis. Sis. That's not my little sis. Your mom is my sis. You're my niece, okay? <laughs> You're my niece. Your mom is a sis, and Jeffrey is my brother. It's been a great day. Thank you all so much for rocking out with us. It's your boy here at the table. We kept it real, relevant, and relatable, and we'll see you all on the next show. Peace out. Give me flex back. Ha <laughs> ha!